Hello everyone and welcome again to another Physio TV session. I am Dr. Tanvi Zaman from Sanchezi Institute College of Physiotherapy and today we have with us here Simranjit Singh sir, a sports psychologist of Mind Sports at Balewadi Stadium, National Games Park, Pune. He has been working with national and international athletes for more than di different sports uh, like football, hockey, gymnastic, etc. with an age ranging right from 10 years to 30 years and more. Today, he will be delivering a talk on importance of psychology and in sports rehabilitation. We feel very happy and privileged to have you here with us today, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Tanvi, for the kind words. Um, okay, so before I give you all any um, information, I'll just share my presentation and then we can start. Okay, so we're going to talk about the importance of psychology in sports rehabilitation today. Um, since all of y'all watching are uh, somehow related to the field of physiotherapy, this will be uh, somehow related to you and interesting, uh, I hope, to you. Um, so yeah, we'll be talking about how athletes go from injury to peak performance. Um, so they come back from injury and then they reach um, big higher levels than they were at before. Uh, so as Sunri said, I'm Simranjit Singh. I'm a sports psychologist and I'm currently working with athletes in around 12 sporting domains at Balewadi Stadium in Pune. Um, these sports range from athletics, um, all, most of the events in athletics to football and hockey being team sports, then table tennis um, and cycling, swimming, sports like these. So yeah, it's a mixture of individual as well as um, team sports. So I um, often come across athletes and work with athletes who uh, are going through minor and major injuries. Um, and my work is to keep them mentally sharp and make them go through uh, the mental training process um, during their rehabilitation and it often becomes it usually becomes a very important part of their rehab process um, so the importance of psychology training during rehabilitation is well known amongst um, among physios amongst rehab experts among even uh, or orthopedic surgeons um, but i think a few only have an idea of exactly what happens with the athlete uh, psychologically speaking um, and at that level, uh, and how they have to deal with a lot of factors at that stage. So I'm just going to move on to the next slide and talk about this a little bit more. So um, now we'll discuss the psychological impact, you know, the in an injury can have on the athlete, um, both physically and mentally. Um, I have um, formed this completely on an experimental basis, um, but there are many floating theories around uh, the impact of injury or the impact that injury has on the mindset of an athlete. Um, so I hope this helps you understand um, the importance of psychology better in the rehab process. So I'll be focusing on how important it is for the player um, and everyone involved, say the coaches, even the physios and anyone else who's involved um, to know more and to be mindful about the situation uh, the athlete is in or the injury surrounding uh, the rehab. So uh, when an athlete is diagnosed with a with a grave injury, um, which will force him or her to be outside of the field or sit outside uh, the game or practice for a long time, um, they go through us. They they ha they say some things to themselves. So these are the some, these are the starting uh, points. Like they will say, "It had to happen to me. I don't think I have this injury. Why me? And why now? I'm at such a big stage. I'm." They might be able. Uh, they might be going to an international state at this point, and injury has stopped them uh, in doing so. Uh, and so, they'll be in the denial stage, in the anger stage. So, uh, these statements might sound familiar to you. Um, if you've gone through an injury yourself, if you've been playing a sport, you might know how difficult it is and what you go through when you first get to know that you have an injury and you are going to be sitting out for a long time. Um, and these statements could be the beginning of a negative approach towards rehab. So we have to be careful right from the start. Uh, now to give you an example, a recent player, uh, referred to me by a physio has changed, uh, his physio 10 times. Um, and why the a first bad experience was the basis of it. Um, so yeah. The surgeon encouraged uh, him to 
so when the um, athlete first went to the physio um it was a, the first session was itself a little bit negative and then uh, it led to the athlete being more mentally drained than when he started so according to my knowledge and experience i feel an athlete goes through these five uh, stages or steps uh, to go from injury diagnosis to their peak performance so starting off at the diagnosis so the player or the athlete is first diagnosed with an injury um and then the rehabilitation process starts so there's a plan made and uh, maybe there'll be uh, a few rest days um and the physios might know better uh what is what comes under this rehabilitation part then would come strengthening to so the part where the main chunk uh, begins where the athlete needs to become stronger uh, so that they don't re-injure themselves or they don't uh, hurt themselves further then would come the comeback part where the athlete plays their first or the first uh, first one or two tournaments or cap or competitions um this will be again a very uh but you have to be pr- pretty balanced uh with the athlete because they will be going through a lot of things like will i be able to play at that same level i don't know how i am going to perform all those things and uh if they are not confident enough in their strengthening and rehab process then they are going to definitely be under confident when they go for that comeback and then finally it would be peak performance so everything else has gone well and now they are at a uh, or better than they are uh, they were before they injured themselves and this will be their peak performance part now the maximum psychological impact that the athletes uh, will face is during the diagnosis mainly during the diagnosis and then uh, re- during the rehabilitation and strengthening pr- uh, part now what can happen is if they, these three uh, if even one of these three don't go well this could become a circle so the athlete is diagnosed uh with the injury they start the rehabilitation process and maybe somewhere in the strengthening part they lose uh trust in themselves um that they can come back or maybe they f- rush their uh come back so what will happen is either they'll end up re-injuring themselves or they'll become too uh they lose absolute trust and they might even leave the sport which has happened with a lot of athletes okay now going forward uh we'll just go over uh, the stages of grief so these these were given by kubler and ross it's also called the kubler and ross model um and these are the uh, so the injured player goes through these uh, stages uh, from the psychological angle um so initially this was given for death but we will all we can also use it for uh, rehab so i'll explain how it goes so the first part is denial where the athlete is uh, not willing to except the diagnosis given to them so when they are first diagnosed with the injury they will uh, totally deny that they have an injury then will come the anger phase um where they are angry either at themselves either at the coach either why uh, at the circumstances why they went for the competition or if it was in practice why did they do that exercise in the first place then will come the bargaining stage where they will try and bargain uh, with the coach with even with the physio sometime that they want to return uh, to the sport sooner than expected or sooner than said by the physio or the coach um then might come the diff- depression phase the, this can range from less to more for athletes uh, some people get extremely depressed and some people are just sad so that's how i uh, differentiate with sadness and depression um sadness being the lesser one of the two um so some athletes can be extremely depressed at this stage and they will start questioning themselves if they can ever come back from this injury and if ever they will be able to reach even their even 90% of their performance uh, that they had before the injury and then finally somewhere we will get the acceptance stage where they'll accept they'll say what can i even do about this right now let's just focus on becoming better and coming back to sport and then we will see what we, what has to be done later so we have to get them to reach the acceptance stage so they will go through all of these phases we just have to be careful uh, that they reach the acceptance phase eventually now uh, to explain this in a little bit more detail denial would be when when they so, so just some statements so denial would be when they say i don't think i have this injury um so they'll totally deny it anger would be they they saying it had to happen to me they uh, they'll be angry at their coach uh at the circumstances as i said bargaining would be it's okay to have an injury but 
I should get rehabilitated soon. This is a positive statement. This is what we need. Um, they could, it could also be negative, like I said earlier. Um, depression would be, I feel so low and horrible. I can't run. Um, and then acceptance eventually would be, it's okay. If not running for eight weeks, I'll, I'll focus on keeping my stamina up through cycling. So finding new ways to uh, get their rehab done and still staying interested in it. Now, uh, how does injury impact the psychological foundations of an athlete? So going beyond, going a little beyond the model, uh, how do you think, uh, let's just think about how the levels of an athlete are impacted psychologically. So there are self-coping methods which the athlete can use. There is focus and attention which the athlete uses and there's thinking and self-belief. Now what happens is injury impacts these, all these. So um, to go slightly ahead, um, their immediate reactions would impact their thinking and their self-belief. They'll lose trust in themselves. They start doubting themselves. Um, they'll start self-labeling. They'll uh, neg There are negative self-labels which they'll use on themselves that I can't do this. I'm not worth it. Stuff, uh, sentences like these. And this will affect their focus. This will affect their uh, attention their concentration span, um, all of these. And they'll start perceiving their social support, which may be their, uh, the other athletes they train with, their friends, their mentors, their coaches, even their physios as negative. And these will, again, affect their self-coping methods. So thinking, self-belief, focus and attention, and self-coping methods are the most important, and we need to keep them both mostly positive. Now, um, so... Each of these areas, so coming back, each of these areas are impacted uh, and it can be, you know, uh, seen throughout the rehab. So uh, immediate reactions, again, could be negative. Uh, this means that the player or athlete is always attractive, attracted uh, to the negative part uh, throughout the process. Um, and basically the focus is also negative. Okay, now moving on to the next one. Um, symptoms that the athlete is not coping well with injury. So we need to understand what, what we'll be seeing if the athlete is not coping with uh, the injury well. So the athlete might think about his previous form or career. So they might be constantly talking about if uh, how they, were, how they were, were when they used to play before the injury uh, and how well they used to perform. Uh, and they'll constantly overanalyze the situation. Now, this could be the current situation. Usually it is the current one. And uh, what I mean by overanalyzing is that they'll start looking at it in a negative way where the process is not being followed as per them. So they'll start uh, saying that, okay, I'm not improving. I'm not progressing. This is not working at all. So they'll constantly keep overanalyzing over and overthinking the situation. They'll have loss of confidence, loss of self-belief. Again, they lose trust in the ability to get better. They lose trust in their, uh, in themselves. Uh, totally, and they'll have no con they'll lose confidence also along the way that they can become better or they can reach that level or even better than they were before the injury. The then the athlete won't have any interest in rehabilitation because it can be so when they are playing the sport, it is filled with a lot of things. When the rehab process is going on, according to the athlete, it will be boring. So they will lose, uh, they might lose interest and they'll start losing interest. Uh, it could happen. Um, then they do not believe in the physiotherapist. It could, it could be one of many things, but yeah, one could be that they do not believe. Um, so yeah, our work would be to keep that belief in them going on. And the last would be self-labeling. So you will see this the most in athletes that they'll start putting negative labels on themselves that I can't do this. I won't be able to perform at the level I was at. Now, uh, so there's thinking and self-belief, there's focus and attention, there's self-coping methods, and there's self-awareness. Now, there is our past uh, future thinking and then this present thinking. So what we need to do is get from the past and future thinking to the present. Focus should be absolutely on the present and not on the past or not on the future. So where we were should not happen. And I don't know if I'll be able to go there should not happen. So focus should be on what we are doing right now. So our thinking and self-belief, focus and attention, self-coping methods, uh, like basically thinking and self-belief focus and attention should be on the present on what we are doing right now. Uh, so in that rehab process, we have to focus on a lot of things. So on our strengthening, on our rehab, along with it, on our sleep, on our nutrition, that is that proper. So they will be constantly having to pay attention to those things and even more so than they were uh, before the injury. 
and this could be one of the reasons they even face the injury that they weren't following a proper nutrition plan or they weren't sleeping properly so they weren't recovering properly and they may be overtrained themselves and hence the injury um there are a lot of many self coping methods that they can use to be uh, present in the moment uh, and not think about the past and the future and eventually we need to make them self aware um yeah so these are the methods um so yeah moving on to the next slide so what is the meaning of being mindful so mindfulness is one of the self coping methods and also one of the self awareness methods so what is the meaning of being mindful so is it mind full of things or is it mindful okay so we need to be uh, so this is just a small explanation of the word mindful now the components of being mindful first first one would be being in the present being non judgmental attending to the now helping your mind and body to be relaxed being compassionate okay so these are the five components of uh, somehow being mindful now um, we somehow do take mindfulness uh, we there are a lot of definitions of mindfulness there but yeah these five components if you understand that's the basis of just being mindful so being in the present being non judgmental about uh, yourself about or about the other one uh, attending to the now what's happening in the present moment here and where am i right now what am i doing uh, and focusing on that helping your mind and body to be relaxed and last one would be being compassionate now for the athlete would be present being present in the moment attending to the present moment um, being non judgmental not judging the process how it's going just be just having trust and moving on um, helping themselves to be relaxed uh, so following relaxation techniques breathing breathing measures um and then being compassionate towards themselves because at the end of the day they need their body more than anything to perform so to be in sports they will need their body so need, they need to be slightly more compassionate to themselves so yes so how does it help to be mindful during the process of in, uh, injury or rehab okay so let's look at that now so how does it help to be mindful during the process of injury uh, rehab um so there is relaxation and coping okay so coping with pain and the disappointment focusing on relaxation techniques in the initial days after diagnosis as well as until the end of rehab so these slides are going to slightly get a little bit wordy just bear with me uh focusing on helping players focus on the right social support and then showing them a realistic road map once they have accepted their injury now coping with pain and the disappointment would be the pain they are having with the injury and the disappointment that they have got an injury maybe they did um, maybe they made a mistake and then got injured and that would be extremely disappointing for them focusing on the relaxation techniques in the initial days after diagnosis as well as until the end of rehab so um whatever the relaxation techniques would be uh, would be given to them focusing on them uh, in the initial days so that they get used to it um until the end of the rehab so they have to be consistent with the techniques given to them so this could be relaxation techniques and also the things that the that, that you the physios would be telling them to do so such as resting would be an important part icing would be another important part if needed um focusing on helping players focus on the right social support so again like we discussed earlier they could start perceiving the social support as negative because all of all of us would be telling them the same thing the psychologist would be telling them the same thing that you can come back it just you have to focus on the process the physios might be telling them the same thing the coaches their friends all might be giving them the same information and then they can start to observe it slightly negatively our our job would be to help them focus on the right uh, social support like the coaches the friends we need to show them that what everyone is trying to uh, do is to just to help them now showing them a realistic road map once they have accepted their injury so once they have reached the acceptance part where they say that okay we have to get better and we will be able to get better and we need to reach uh, uh, our peak performance part we need to come back and go for peak performance so this will come when we show them a realistic road map so maybe say if someone has a knee injury and they are going to be out for 6 months we need to show them a map of what those 6 months are going to look like um because if some of the athletes will try and bargain 
by saying i want to come back early and the easiest way would be to give in to that uh, to those thoughts of the athlete and then either they will face re-injury or uh, we will have to tell them to sit out for longer and then again they will face disappointment they lose trust and so it is better so that we show them the road early on we tell them that you are going to be out for 6 months because this is the injury you are facing and this is the process we are going to go for with there are going to be maybe phases in the process and uh, we can show them small small goals that they have achieved throughout the process so one way for them one way for us to uh, help them would be to show them the goals after uh, they achieve each goal a small way would be to celebrate it in a small way okay now the purpose of coping through relaxation techniques in rehabilitation um, we we'll go through a couple of purposes so the goal of uh, using relaxation techniques is to learn how to voluntarily decrease amount of tension in their muscles there are three calm their mind and decrease autonomic responses okay so uh, learn how to voluntarily decrease amount of tension in muscles uh, could be through progressive muscle relaxation breathing exercises calm their mind again could be through some kind of meditation and then decrease autonomic response would be uh, so elevated heart rate without any stimulus could be an autonomic response so we need to get uh to decrease we need to decrease that now next would be uh, there are various relaxation techniques that have been identified as useful for injured athletes uh, and these are for two reasons two specific reasons one would be to alleviate control uh, to alleviate control and assist athletes in coping with the pain and second would be to reduce the symptoms of stress and anxiety so i hope this is pretty self explanatory moving on to the next one uh, what could be the basic types uh, one is belly breathing okay so there are four one is belly breathing one is uh, pmr i'll explain this a little in detail uh, let i'll just go through all four one is mindful pause and then fourth is body scan uh, meditation so belly breathing would be abdominal breathing so we we'll just do all of these four for about 10 to 15 seconds each um so belly breathing is also called abdominal breathing okay so we are breathing from the stomach so the way i like to explain it to the players is that uh, our chest cannot expand as much as our stomach and so for our lungs to fill in as much air as possible they need to expand for that to expand the stomach would need to expand and not our chest so i make them keep one hand on the chest one hand on the stomach and then tell them to breathe in through your in to their nose and they could breathe out through either their nose or their mouth and we like to control this through uh, timing so they breathe in for 4 seconds hold it in for 1 to 2 seconds and breathe out longer than they breathe, uh, than they breathe in so maybe 4 seconds in hold for a second or two breathe out for 5 to 6 seconds and then hold for 1 to 1 to 2 seconds okay uh, and in this way we do our uh, belly or abdominal breathing they could do this either sitting down or uh, sitting or lying down second would be progressive muscle relaxation so this is done uh, usually this is done uh, before the before the competitions uh, whether when the athlete lies down and uh, they are told to tense and then relax each muscle progressively mindful pause would be to pause in between the competition so if they are going uh, uh, for the competition they pause and they just come back to the present moment and that's how mindful pause can help them come back to what they are doing in the now because there will be a lot of things going on in their head um, but they need to take a pause and then come back to the present moment that's how uh, they'll be able to focus on the now um, and then last one would be body scan meditation so this is another way um, to meditate so you try and think about each of your body parts you can start from the top or the bottom and then try and relax and find tension and relax in each of the uh, parts of your body so maybe their shoulders are slightly tense so they'll think about uh, that and then relax and then they keep going on and that's how body scan meditation is done and these are the basic types of relaxation techniques now when is relaxation important okay this is quite important when is relaxation important so before starting any form of rehab session after finishing any form of rehab session okay so before and after is important because one this will help them relax as the technique says uh, as the word says and also um, this will help them come back 
to the present moment not thinking about the past not thinking about the future just being in the present moment okay uh, then at home maybe getting up uh, after getting up or in the afternoon and then uh, lastly would be before going to sleep okay so for how much time could you do this so before starting any form of session it should be slightly shorter okay so that it increases their focus so it could be around 2 to 3 minutes after finishing any form of rehab session could be around slightly longer could be 5 to 6 minutes okay 4 to 6 minutes could be that range at home again could be same amount of time and then uh, if they're doing it in the morning or afternoon and then before going to sleep should be slightly longer because they actually want to just relax and then go to sleep uh, and this will help them go to sleep also so when they face issues like uh, they're not being able to sleep uh, on time and then they spend a lot of time so one thing could be them keeping their phones aside and then doing the relaxation um, doing the performing the relaxation technique so this could be around 8 uh, to 10 minutes so slightly on the longer end now uh, we need to redirect their focus to rehabilitation okay now um, focus should be in the present and on the process okay this can be continued through mindful interventions like pause and body scan so mindful pause and the body scan meditation these are the two techniques you can they can use um, throughout their mindful mindful interventions um and again the focus should be on the present and on the process so that can be done through again the mindful interventions also it can be better through guided healing imagery which will help the athlete focus on the rehab and not just rush to come back or go back in the past so again like i said uh, this will help them uh, heal better and they will not just keep going round and round between the diagnosis uh, rehab and the strengthening phase they will actually go to the come back and they'll not rush it they come back uh, better okay now developing a strong positive mindset this is again an important part and a lot of uh, times i have been referred athletes for this very reason that they need to have a strong positive mindset for them to go through the rehab process because they come in uh quite demotivated so this can be done through um these about six stages so six seven parts so this can be done through awareness of current thought process okay they need to be aware of what they are thinking identifying negative thought processes so they need to start noticing what their negative thoughts are and what the process actually looks like so when we actually start uh, tell them to think about it when so example i tell them, tell an athlete to go through their negative thoughts it could look uh, like i'm not going to be able to do this that could be a statement that they tell themselves um and current thought process again could be them thinking about the past or the future like i was so good when i uh, was not injured how i could play uh, so beautifully and then i don't know if i'll be able to go ahead so identifying uh, the negative thought processes and being aware of their current thought processes uh we need to help them debate over why this is not helping their rehabilitation so once they start uh, being aware of their current thought process and identify the negative thought process they, uh, we can help them debate over or just discuss over why this is not helping their rehab process uh, and why thinking like this is not going to help them go forward and then we need to continue this process through rehab because there are going to be phases where they lose trust and then they they sort of start feeling positive and then they might lose trust again so we need to continue this process throughout their uh, rehab journey we need to help them identify conscious positive thoughts related to the present so may, this could look like just turning the negative thought process or the negative thoughts into positive ones so i am never going to be able to do this could turn into i am going to come back even stronger so changing negative sentences into positive ones easy as that and then last would be visualization will help them overcome that so visualization is another part which can help them overcome self doubt so if someone uh, for example an athlete who was working with me was facing in a knee injury and he wasn't uh, he was at the end of his rehab process where he had uh, started doing light work on the track he wasn't trusting uh, his knee a lot he was still uh, feeling that there is pain so we had to go through a small visualization process and then he was told to do this every day so he was told to visualize himself doing the same movements which uh, he does not trust the move so he was having um, 
he was thinking that he'll have pain with jumps uh with hops so we used to visualize him doing jumps and hops and that helped him sort of overcome his doubt or his uh, lack of trust on his knee okay now uh, from the earlier slide like as i explained maximum psychological impact uh, happens on happens to an athlete during the diagnosis rehabilitation and the standing part and we need to basically move this to psychological standing so that will happen throughout the uh, process throughout the throughout all five stages from diagnosis to rehabilitation to standing to come back and to peak performance they will need some kind of psychological standing throughout these five stages okay and not just the first three because even after they've come back they will have a doubt that will i be able to play or will i be able to perform my uh, best or even better than i was at before the injury because that is the main concern for all the athletes that will i be able to perform at my peak will i be able to perform as i was before and uh, so the last two things i would want to say first would be the mantra so every athlete would need a mantra um, and this could just be just could, just look easy uh, like being in the present um focusing on the now um so their win could be what is important now if they start focusing on what's important now that's a big win for us and for them and uh, another thing could be just be an accept so accept what situation you are in and focus on that work on that that could help you get forward this these are things we can tell the athlete uh, to sort of motivate them to sort of get them to think about where what situation they are in uh, now and how they are going to get better and uh, the last thing uh, would be what if uh, the career career threatening injury how can mindfulness help so what if, what if there is a career threatening injury and how can mindfulness help them acceptance is the key uh, possible visit to a sport site i would consider it as a must it should happen because there is going to be uh mental areas which would need strengthening uh, uh might know this by now uh mindfulness based interventions to help them accept and agree with the current situations some of this you might also be able to help them with as we discussed in the earlier slides uh and then what's next following uh so what's next would be following the plan that you the physios will give them uh consistently they need to follow it um taking rest when needed uh following their nutrition plan to the t following their sleep to the t this will help them become better as soon as possible so yeah uh, coming to the end of the small uh, presentation that i had for you had for everyone about how important sports uh, psychology is in the sports rehab process yes uh, again i am sivanand jeet i am currently working with mind sports sports psychology mind first performance psychology consult uh, consulting and dream to play uh at balewadi stadium uh here's my email id and my phone number if you need to contact me and ask me any questions if you again if you have any questions regarding any of uh the things we discussed today you feel free to contact me and ask me the questions i'll try and respond as soon as possible thank you everyone i'll just stop sharing um any questions then we you might have yes sir i'll just un yeah okay uh so uh, as sir you mentioned that uh, there are a lot of athletes like uh we see we uh, as we progress them like simply if we ask to run then they have they might have some psychological issues or fear of re injuries rather than a physical mm -hmm. deficit actual physical deficit so there is yeah. there are any signs that we can pick up uh, like this should be some a psychological issue rather than a physical pain or something mm -hmm. so you you might see this in your daily practice as well that you make them do one exercise and uh, they have no pain in it whatsoever so they'll yes. say that they have one or maybe zero uh, on a yes. scale of 1 to 10 and then you make them do a similar exercise uh, which may use the same muscles and then they are feeling mm -hmm. a little bit of fear while doing it or they are uh, hesitant when doing it 
that could be one of the few signs um, they okay. they'll show and yeah. that could be one way where you can maybe refer them to a sports psychologist or uh, just help talk to them about it just talking to them would they will tell you about mm-hmm. it uh, first only okay. yes definitely and uh, other thing matlab like as i said during diagnosis purpose like uh, we ask them to not to play for a certain duration of time and uh, like we have to be strict and realistic at the same time and also not to have a negative impact on them so as a physio how can uh, we deal with this situation like are there any some words or any technique to uh, tell convey the this things to them so uh, first would be just to talk to them as uh, as a friend would i mean mm. they would slowly start opening up about one mm. why they got injured and then once they mm. start talking about how the injury process has gone to them till now they'll start accepting also so they'll they'll go through that denial anger all of those mm. phases but then mm. our work would be to slowly get them to the acceptance phase one they are there okay. once they are there and they accept that okay i have an injury i have to work with it then they'll uh, then they'll listen to you about whatever you say okay okay so thank you sir for such a informative sessions and giving us your valuable time and i would also like to thanks dr parav santhi ji sir chairman of uh, sancheti groups ms manisha sangvi ma executive director of sancheti healthcare academy and dr apurva shimpi sir principal uh, of our own college and all the uh, physio tv viewers and also i would also like to thanks the technical team for such smooth running of the sessions so thank you sir Thank you everyone for giving me this opportunity. Uh yes. Thank you.